The date is Sunday, December 11th, 2011 at 10.43 p.m. at Dad's house. You know, I'm starting to wonder whether how frequent I should make these entries because I always make myself formulate around one a day even though I could say a lot more with the knowledge I already have but I don't disperse all of it for reasons like well putting everything down in one sitting doesn't really give me any insights it's just more of a summary really so I just might keep up this pace hopefully going to restart my mind has gone a bit boggy cannot think objectively and efficiently at the moment so yeah the date is tuesday december the 13th 2011 at 11 18 a.m eastern standard time in the college cafeteria okay seeing as i have to hurry up since i have to return this textbook back to the school Let's try and get a bit of information down, why don't we? So, let's explain better about a few things we went down on in the last few entries. I mentioned free radicals when I brought up the antioxidant acids of vitamin C and E. So, what are free radicals? Well, free radicals are the products of the breaking of bonds of electrons... In, in the body, uh, basically. They are short-lived and highly reactive. They can spread around to other processes in order to multiply, and they are believed to damage the tissue at a cellular level, harming things like our DNA and cells. The antioxidant vitamins, including beta-carotene and selenium, a mineral, which I've just discovered, and the free radical chain reactions. This supports the hypothesis that cancer can be caused by nutrient deficiency. But to put things into perspective, we cannot get all the evidence that supports this one hypothesis and forget all the other factors, so we must keep that in mind. Other than that, it could just be another survival of the fittest where your genes and survival rate just sucks. So, where should we go on from here? Uh, let's continue with strengthening your immune system. Yes, yeah, that's a good idea. So, exercise. Normal, constant physical activity is going to help the subject in several ways. For one, it strengthens the body and the immune system, and as time goes on, it allows better oxygen to throw through the body. Ah, now I remember. The thing I wanted to bring up though, was the psychological well-being of a person. Now, as I remember from my psychology class, stress can literally change how the body reacts, feels, gets diseases, and whatnot. With a good, or better yet, a better attitude, someone can potentially get better quicker than one without a good mood or in a grumpy mood. Problem here is there isn't enough evidence to support the state of psychological well-being when relating to cancer. But there's still suspicion and uh, questions that these tests were done wrong, but other than that, nothing has been worked out, so that seems like another dead end. But even so, I am reminded of a story of my professor that once told me of a man that had a XYZ disease and he wasn't going to live at all. It was terminal. But he was as happy as a bird. Nothing could be better in the world. The doctor gave him placebos and he went on happy. He did not feel any symptoms until the doctor said it was a placebo. And he died a week later. Luck, confidence, it's not my call. But the human mind is capable of more than what we take for granted. So, I would take core value in the subject of having a positive outlook on life. Not a fake one, like mine, where you fool yourself into it. The subconscious and unconscious have ways of telling yourself you are unhappy. On a final note, I'm worried about Callie's obsessant affliction with drinking coffee or espresso or 
latte or whatever they're called. Though caffeine is not related to any sort of cancer, some of the drinks she may be taking could increase other disease risks like uh, cardiovascular or the sweetener she may be or may not be assuming. So, well, probably needs more support and mental behavior changes if there is anything significant to worry about. Best case scenario, she'll just have to go to the bathroom every other hour.